Howdy, horse fans. It's your friendly neighborhood coriander. And special guest, Angel. That's my name. Yes. Good. I'm just sharpening a pencil. And also, there are cats. Oh. <laughs> so the orange one's Loki. Yes. The brown one, her name is Kitten, and it's long story, but... We got That's, time. She is not actually a kitten. That she does happen to all of us. Two years old. <laughs> ah, two years is still youthful. Here we go. There she is. Sad Mao. Yeah, she's sad all the time. Oh no. It's okay. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about today. No. Talking about how how long it takes me to sharpen this pencil. Here, <laughs> let's all let's all watch. <laughs> Just... I'm not sure if that excessively long honk came through. It did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know I'm not using sandpaper to sharpen it. I'm using uh, an old, dull sharpener. <laughs> Getting there. Yes! Alright, this is, this is usable now. I'm Great. ready to start the show. So, uh, Angel has prepared a presentation for us to introduce our topic. I have! Are you ready to go? Uh, no. I'll just keep uh, sharpening then. <laughs> yes, yes, now I'm ready. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> I forgot that I did that. <laughs> I'm going to have to unflip your uh, display a little bit. <laughs> One second. Uh, I can't okay. see it right now, but okay. I'm sure it's hilarious. It is hilarious. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, we're good. We're good. Okay. Uh, today we're going to talk about light because you need it to see things and therefore you need it to draw things. Uh, we're going to talk about four qualities of light uh, that we need to take into account when we are making three-dimensional looking art. Uh, the first is the direction. The second is the contrast. Third is the color. And fourth is the quality. So we'll walk through each of these things. Firstly is direction. And as you can see by this lovely animation, direction determines where the shadows are and how large the shadows are. So in this painting, uh, the light is directly in front of the subject. Uh, it's also known as portrait lighting because it's used in photography for taking portraits a lot. Um, the subject is fully illuminated. There aren't that many shadows. And what this does to the art is makes it low drama. So in this case, it is juxtapositioned against the horrific uh, subject matter uh, and trying to make it look more boring for uh, comedic effect. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Comedy. <laughs> All right. Uh, so in this painting, the, uh, the light is to the left and slightly above the subject. Uh, this is known as form lighting. It is the most popular lighting. Uh, the subject is three quarters to two thirds illuminated. It emphasizes form and texture. It's the easiest to make things look three dimensional, which is why it is the most popular. I didn't know that this was going to be a popularity contest. Yeah. Uh, the light from directly in front is the least popular because it is the most boring. Noted. <laughs> uh, so we have medium drama here. All right. Uh, so in this case, the light is behind the subject and slightly off center. 
this is also known as rim lighting. Uh, the subject is one quarter or less illuminated and it's good for separating the subject from the background. It also is slightly higher drama. All right, and finally, the direction in this case is directly behind the subject uh, in this painting, given that the subject is these little animals at the bottom. Also known as backlighting, um, that casts the subject in complete shadow and emphasizes depth. And we have here the highest drama. Okay, so this is exactly how I should take all pictures of people because it's super dramatic. If if you want drama, then yes. Of course I but, want drama. Uh, that, that might not be always what you're going for. All right. Uh, so next we're going to talk about contrast. This is also how focused the light is and determines how dark the shadows are. Uh, so in this case, we have a... Uh, Claude Monet's House of pa Houses of Parliament on a foggy day. Uh, the light is very diffused. You can see the shadows are uh, quite light. Uh, it creates weak contrast. It also creates the illusion of vibration and movement and is low drama. It's nice and relaxing. Uh, alternatively, and this is the same when, uh, same scene outside of his window uh, at sunset where the light is more focused. Uh, we have high contrast. It draws the eye and commands attention and increases drama. So if you want dramatic lighting, you want dark shadows. All right. Uh, Thirdly is color. So the color of the light can change the color of the thing that you are seeing. In this case, we have more Houses of Parliament. Uh, we have cool, relaxing colors. Uh, produces warm shadows generally. That's not always the case. And that has low drama, as we discussed in the color section of Cantrell Horses Club, see previous presentation. And uh, opposite of that, we have warm lighting, and which appears active and inviting and, and produces cool shadows and increases drama. All right, quality is how large your light source is as compared to your subject and determines how, uh, how soft the edges of your shadows are. So when you have a large light source, you have soft shadows. Uh, it bounces, the light bounces around a lot and creates uh, you know, reflections and areas of highlights. And we have low drama. We would call that well lit. Yes, well lit. When you have a small light source, you have crisp dark shadows. It brings the subject to the foreground and you have High drama. All right, okay. that is all. So when you start a painting, the question you want to ask yourself, or not only painting, but any sort of art, is how much drama do you want? Well, right now I'm experiencing a lot of drama uh, okay. as a piece of pencil lead is stuck in my sharp <laughs> and That has been the source of a lot of my problems lately. So I'm going to go find a tiny screwdriver because I tried, I tried knifing it a little to get it out but I'm, okay. I'm just gonna step away briefly please entertain the chat until i find uh phillips okay. head screwdriver of the right size and shape brb all right it's just me and chat uh so i'm gonna start chat with this lovely picture of nothing i have set up a live demonstration this is a box inside of a box where there is no light, so you can't see what's in it. I have a small hole in the box, so I'm going to shine some light in the box so you can see what's in it. I have this mag light flashlight. 
I'm going to use as my light source. And we have a dramatic stage. That is indeed high drama. So we have a bright light that is directly on there, creating crisp, dark shadows, high contrast. Uh, it's not no color of light, just a plain white light, but it is a red cloth inside. So I'm going to switch out the light for a moment. Here I have a UV black light. Oh. You gonna fluoresce something? Uh, well, I use it to find where the cats have peed in the house. So, uh. <laughs> the moment you said use it to find, I was like, I've seen CSI. <laughs> yes, where the murders have occurred. <laughs> no, it's uh, bodily fluids. We call it. <laughs> Uh, I have some other light sources here. This is a uh, fairy oh, light. One second. You've gone oh. uh, slightly poopy. I just need to remember How where I... rainbow puke lives. Yeah, okay. Sorry, the setting <laughs> on my end that fixes that is called rainbow puke. Which is what they've decided to call that data mosh uh, effect. Neat. Oh, so this is a thing that I use in cosplay a lot. Uh, it's a packing material. Yeah. That's kind of like thin, very thin styrofoam that comes in sheets. And you can wrap it around lights to diffuse the light to get a softer effect. So let me turn this on. So this is a string of fairy lights is what they're called. But when you diffuse the light, you can make it look like all one big light source, like a lightsaber. Cool. That's how people make lightsabers. If I stick that in the hole, that's a sentence. Uh, you can see a soft, softer shadows on my red fabric. Yeah. And it even makes it kind of look purplish because it's not not fully illuminated, it's kind of in the dark. So I'm gonna to try to paint this fabric. What light should I use in my painting? Ooh. Ooh. Uh, straw poll, Twitch chat, help me, help me make a decision. Oh. <laughs> I have a a not very useful light, which changes colors. Where'd it go? No, it's gone. I'll grab another one. I have this handy drawer labeled lights. Hey. The robot says option two. Was that the black light? I so think that was the second one you shut off, yeah. Is an LED that changes colors. Yeah, definitely paint the, the color changing scene. <laughs> It'd be hard to do. So I think blue or green gives you some really nice range in the colors. Yeah. I like colorful things. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to paint paint it all red and then maybe like do sections of different lighting. That would be so cool. All right. All right. What should so, I do? I should do my warm-ups. <laughs> that was me locking and loading my chair for for art activities.
So what I'm using to start with is cadmium deep red hue, which is kind of a bluish red actually. How's it showing up on camera? Not quite as blue on camera. You got like a one inch flat brush. Oh, it's an angle brush. Oh. It's exciting. Yeah, it's, if I need to cover large areas of canvas, it's a lot easier to do with a large brush. I have other things to put in the box as well, so we can see what things. those look like. Yeah. Things. Well, I have clay, which means I can make anything to put into the box. Any shape we want. That sounds exciting. I recall that you wanted to know how to paint a cylinder. I do. That is the primary challenge because I've seen a lot of cubes in my life as well as spheres, but cylinders are teensy bit different, especially depending on like how many faces they have. Wait, how many faces does a cylinder have? Just three, right? I don't know. Kind of. It's like, well, it's like how an octagon is in a circle. Right. But it's kind of the same. So like, because computers are bad at circles, when you make a cylinder in a video game, it's never a cylinder. It's just got many, many side faces. Yeah. That's exactly it. Basically all the way up from triangle or like prism shape up to like, mm -hmm. you know, hundreds of faces. It looks like a D100, but. Just means less math. The trade-off in computing is always like space versus processing. So cutting the number of faces, lower processing. thing I'm doing right now with my pencil is target practice where I'm trying to draw a straight line between two arbitrary points so like I make my points and then I kind of ghost the movement I want to make a few times and try not to hit my microphone cable with the pencil because that really messes up my lines <laughs> yeah sometimes I hit the microphone on my desk with the paintbrush. I'm sure that's bad for viewers. So I try not to. So now I'm going to try and draw uh, circles between my different divisions. This is mostly red. Get 
Oh, perfect. I've already painted my fingers all red. I look like I've committed crime. <laughs> and, I mean, if you had started the stream wearing like blue latex gloves, I would have, I would have like just assumed you were a criminal. <laughs> like, it's like, what are, you, what are you trying to hide there, Angel? Nothing. Look, look. I can prove that it's not blood. See. <laughs> Yeah, except you have to put luminol oh. on so that it reacts. So oh. unless you have luminol, you're not you're not really showing us anything. Not the truth at least. <laughs> uh what's seven divided by three? A little bit more than two. Okay. Good enough. Contingent Cat makes a good point. Why don't we have a math command? That would help a lot of our streams. <laughs> <laughs> math could no longer be for blockers alone. It could be in the hands of everyone. That's dangerous. All right, now I have to wait for this to dry a bit before I start painting more on top of it. You don't think your, your wet mixing would... Uh... It's not so good with acrylic. It usually just erases. But it doesn't take very long to dry. If I got out my heat gun or my hair dryer, I could make it go faster, but that would be noisy. So while we're watching paint dry, uh, <laughs> exciting streaming, right? I have I have Blender up because we were gonna be casting some lights, and so I might as well try. Yeah. Uh, some stuff. Got the default scene here: camera, cube, light, little point light, out in the, out in the distance. I'm trying to grab it, can't grab it. Ah, Blender. Meep. Me, 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 me. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna. Oh no. Just hit arbitrary buttons. Let's make a plane surface. Mesh. Mesh plane. Here's my mesh plane. It's happy. It's 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 vibing. It's in its lane. I'm gonna make a new material for it. I want it to be like col colorful. I'm gonna call this material colorful. Uh, green. All right. If I if I go into a different view, is this the view? Yeah. There we go. Like a kind of a render view. It'll sh it'll show. Yes, now I can move it around. Eventually I will remember all of the controls. I'm just gonna scale it a little. Um, I have a lot of things that I could do. So I might as well also add like a cylinder for my sake. And you can see how some of the edges uh, appear flat. And that's because they are. Because like I said, it is not perfectly curved. Right. So what I want to try to do is bounce light onto this surface. So I'm just going to make like a white material. Base color is white. I could make it shiny that kind of thing. But this should basically work. Hmm. Let's figure out how to do this without holding the flashlight. 
There we go. Oh. All right. I made the sun so too powerful. Is... <laughs> yeah, that that'll do it. Everything's white. I mean, that's an effect you can uh, you can use. Spotlight. All right, so in my first scene, the fabric is a bit more orange, so I'm going to use cadmium red to get that effect. I'm going to get a slightly smaller paintbrush. This is a half inch flat brush. I'm just waiting for the flashlight to fall. It's going to terrify me when it does. Yeah, we also have the problem with the cats where they try to get in the box. Uh, you mean kitty cave? <laughs> yes. You're right, I do mean that. I'm just going to write down a suggestion from chat to uh, use composition lessons to break down shots from the movie the fall so shots 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 bam shots i've not seen this movie what's it about lee pace desert Have I even seen this movie? <laughs> I don't know. I believe it's the same costume designer who worked on The Cell. I haven't seen that either. So it's... I don't watch a lot of movies. I do. I watched like five movies last week. I did watch one movie last week. Which is more than usual. Yeah, okay. Brownie Points has it. Lee Pace tells a little girl in a hospital a story that gets more fantastical as it goes along. That's it. It's got a lot of, like, fantasy and bizarre imagery elements. But like it's... Pan, like Pan's Labyrinth? Yeah, well, like Pan's Labyrinth or, uh, you know, The Princess Bride. You know, it's basically The Princess Bride. Okay. Definitely, totally like that. And not like, I don't know, Tree of Life or something. I don't even right. know who directed it. Wow. So I left a little of the... <laughs> uh, what is it? color, whatever, the original color. I left a little bit on the left. Uh, I'm kind of painting this backwards, but uh, the right side 
is going to be a little lighter because I have the the light is a more diffused on that side. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to use ivory black, which is it's like oil. It's a very transparent black. Let's see if I nope move that over there. When I spread it out, it's kind of translucent so it's good for making shadows right on top of other things so i'm just going to start with this bottom shadow Are you still trying to make Blender work? Yeah. I might actually have to do a bit of a render to get the bouncing I want. I forget how to get Blender to show me the viewpoint of the camera that I'm moving around, but it's okay. I also forget how to start a render. Rendering. Just like F8. Oh god, no, I didn't do anything. Mm. I give up on the drawing. <laughs> okay. What are you going to draw? Cylinder. Cylinder, all right. This should be basically the way I saw it in my head of how the blender thing was going to work. I can make a cylinder and put it on our stage if you want to see what it looks like. That would be cool. This is ultralight sculpty, oh. which means it will never dry. 
unless I bake it. It's not good to get a uh, fine detail with, but it's good for roughing out stuff. After you bake it, can you carve it and stuff? Uh, no, it kind of crumbles uh. if you carve it. But it makes for a good foundation. Like you can add details with other materials. Like ramen or uh, cereal. Uh huh. Yep, that's the materials I was thinking of. Really? How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Why would I put ramen in my things? You've been on the internet. You know what people get up to. <laughs> I mean, I do, but. Do you want a tall, skinny cylinder or a short, fat cylinder or a perfectly proportional cylinder? Yeah, like the square of cylinders. The square, the cube, the rounded cube. Like a, a perfect jumbo marshmallow. Yes. I'm going to make it a little bigger than that and then slice it off. Hopefully you get flat edges. A little crooked. Right. And what kind of lighting do you want for your marshmallow? Um, I don't know if diffuse would be very good because I kind of want to at least see the shadows. Let's do like boring portraiture light. Uh, okay. Spotlight. You're going to be very disappointed what? by by how that looks. All right. Oh, that's the bottom. Ah, ah the gravity. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I can flip it. On no, my it's perfect. This is fine. Okay. But remember, it's, okay. it's all about how like the eye works. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So boring front portraiture light. Yes. I'm not disappointed. That's can't quite get it exactly because the camera that's where the camera is. <laughs> now now all you can see is the Okay, function. okay. You can you can move it like three quarters. You can <laughs> Yeah. Like if you do that. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. That's that's form lighting. Is this the most popular lighting? It is. I'm going to close the box so the outside light influence is minimized and cut the hole. So I usually need three colors to make your object look three-dimensional. What? Three? Yeah. Or three values. Same thing. Uh, all right. I think that's going to do it for the first section. I'm going to do the black lighting for the second section.
It, it looks so weird upside down. <laughs> I'm gonna draw this upside down marshmallow. <laughs> Just kind of roughly plop in kind of some of the. Forms. Yeah, you can, you can also see in the shadow of the marshmallow is red because of the red background and how it's reflecting. Yeah, that's the light reflection stuff I wanted to look at. Yeah. I'll just have to make do with my, my pencil crayons. I'm trying to remember what the black light looked like. I can shine the black light on something else. Oh, neat. Black light looks pretty cool on the desert bus craft. Oh, is that your glow in the dark stuff? Uh, well, it's the, I've used this neon green paint to insulate my, uh, conductive thread. Yeah. And it, it glows in the black light. Sorry, did you say conductive thread? I did say conductive thread. I have, it's a two-ply steel thread. It's here. It's exciting. Oh no, rainbow cube again. <laughs> <laughs> if there is a button to fix the rainbow puke, why does it just fix itself? Because it can't detect that it's happening. Oh. This might be some of your packets get lost in the mail, you know? I'm sorry about my packets. <laughs> So to cut down on space, a lot of video formats only send uh, changes between frames in the video. Yeah, and that makes sense. Then there are special frames that reset the whole thing. So if those special frames get lost, you're left with There's just iterating frame, changes right? on uh, whatever garbage was there. Oh. It's happening a lot. Is there something I could do about that? Uh, live very close to me and share a router. I don't live that far away. Yeah, but we're not directly connected. No. in Victoria once it was nice but probably too expensive for me to live there it's a teeny bit expensive to live here yes it's like would you like a house do you have a million dollars there was the the houseboats I don't know how expensive those are uh the ones that are actually like parked out But it was like, I don't know if they were, but uh, they were floating houses like on the docks. Yeah. I don't know how those, how much those cost, but I know you have to pay like, uh, dock fees. 
stuff like that. Yeah. Like when you have a trailer, you'd have to pay to park it. Yeah. Yeah. So on the second panel, I'm using uh, deep violet for my shadows instead of black because I'm simulating if the light were blue and blue and red make purple. Okay. And it just trying to build up values on my end. <laughs> so on my side, it's not upside down. Yeah. But when I look at yours, you are drawing it upside down. I am. Because <laughs> it's upside down. It's very, uh, very disorienting. Do we wait till the break to do some subs? Oh yeah, we can. Okay. I mean, if you if you want to hit them, you can. Oh. Uh, if you're, okay. If you're antsy, I'm just looking down, so it's a little hard for me to see the notifications come in. Zethlin seven seven nine zero, thank you for thirty four months saying, "Woot!" I'm happy to support these amazing people. Thank you. I don't know if that's the only one. That's I just saw that one. That is the only one. All right. Do you have a uh, smudger? Sorry, what? Do you have a smudger? Oh, no. no you can I make don't. one. I could. Just tear off a piece of paper and roll it up. Yeah. I used to do that all the time. And then you eat them. No, you don't. Don't eat, don't eat them, especially not after you've used them. No. <laughs> Well, it's not like we use real lead anymore for pencils. No, but it's still paper. It's still not good. Paper has like, it's been through some processes to get it the color it is. And that involves some chemicals that are not mm -hmm. for eating. You gotta soak your pulp. I've lived near a lot of pulp mills in my time. <laughs> I 
I grew up by uh, Seagram's uh, brewery. The the gin brewery, or did yeah. they do they also brew other things? I don't. I'm not really. They familiar. they brew other things, but I think that might be what they're famous for. So it is very yeasty smelling all the time. Uh. So this last one I think is going to be really ugly. I'm going to do what if the red fabric had green light shining on it. Ooh, just like Marvel's what if. <laughs> <laughs> Popular modern day references. I haven't seen any of them. Are they good? See, I'm trying to evaluate kind of uh, for like a general audience versus mm -hmm. my personal thing because my personal thing is like I love AUs. I love like what if all, all of the Fantastic Four had the things powers? That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Which is what the original comic book series covered. There was a lot of Fantastic Four what ifs. And a lot where the Watcher is just a weirdo. But uh when is the Watcher not a weirdo? Usually he just sits there and does nothing. Okay. That's still weird, though. It's it's weird that he's watching, but it gets weirder if he does things, like become a superhero. That's right. Random trivia. He's not called the doer. Is that a really loud seagull? Have you met a seagull? I have. I take it that means they're all really loud. A little bit. I need to see for a second what, what this looks like. So I'm going to shine With the, the color-changing light in ah. there. You no, know, the color-changing one. And memorize when it turns green, what that looks like. You can't just uh, set it. That's green. No, right? not this one. Blue. This, it just changes by itself. It's a really cheap <laughs> light. I need to turn the other light off. Yeah. Go for it. There it is. Oh. <laughs> like you don't have to memorize what the color looks like because the other colors are at the same uh, intensity, right? Uh, yeah, that's true. All right, your marshmallow is back on stage. Thank you. I'm trying to get a grasp on the, the, the half tone section. Oh, do we want to do that other Do part? you want to do that other? We can. All right. Well, actually, let's take a break. And then when we come back from break, uh, we do the other. Nice.
All right. We will be back shortly after these messages. Howdy, howdy. Are you all ready for part two? Uh, yes. Okay. Ready with the slideshow? Yes. All right. Angel has prepared part two for uh, <laughs> Can't Draw Horses Club today, Light and Shadow. You'll never guess uh, what part two is. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, I messed up. It's light and shading. Uh, yeah. No, uh, now I don't know what to say. You've ruined everything. Uh, okay, just quickly edit the... <laughs> <laughs> there, there. This one says shadow. We're good. We're good. <laughs> so if you've ever seen a how to draw thing, you would have seen a, a diagram that looks like this. I found a funnier one that had a whole bunch of extra arrows on it. But uh, uh, this is a sphere that I've drawn that uh, shows all of the different tones that you need to make so that they look three-dimensional. Uh, there is a quick walkthrough of how you get all of these things. So uh, you start with a silhouette and what's called the local color. This is the color that the, uh, the brain will think that the object is. And then you choose your light source, which we talked about earlier. This one is uh, to the upper left. And you separate your light side and dark side by shading one side, uh, the darkest color that you would like in your picture. And then this line in between is called the terminator. Uh, insert terminator joke here. Uh, I'll be back. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, so now you add the mid-tones to the light side. This is what you were just talking about, Corey, where uh, you make a slightly darker area around the uh, what will become the highlight. And so an important thing to keep in mind is assuming your object is all one color, uh, everything on the light side of the object has to be lighter than everything on the dark side of the object and vice versa. So when you start getting the midtones into the shadow area is when your object starts looking flat and fake again. So you want to avoid that. All right, uh, then you add your cast shadow and to determine where your shadow is, uh, you can draw a line from the terminator onto your surface, whatever that surface might be. And the, uh, as we talked about in the other presentation, the shadow uh, color and defined edges is dependent on what sort of light source you have. All right, and now you have reflective light. It's pretty subtle in this picture, uh, but there, there's a little bit of light in the shadow as well as on the right side of the object where the light has bounced off of the surface. Uh, still should be darker than everything on the left side. Uh, now you add your occlusion shadow, uh, which is this dark part down here. Uh, this is where even the bounced light does not reach. Oh, that was backwards, but <laughs> there's a, a highlight. No one noticed, it's fine. This is fine, this is fine. Uh, so you want to lighten up the uh, your values. You could use an eraser if you're doing pencil um, or just paint on top for digital painting or real painting or traditional painting, sorry. There's not real and fake painting. Uh, and then you're done and you have a thing that looks three-dimensional. So how how are you doing on that, Corey? Uh, um... Well, I figured out F12 is the render button, but basically what we're seeing in the scene right now is what I'm getting with my, my render. But I'm trying to trying to bounce the light off the off the plane still. 
not. I, I could make the plane emit light. That That's a thing I could do. How about your marshmallow? My marshmallow is perfect and beautiful. Um, see over here, it's very bright because the light's directly on it. And over mm -hmm. here, it's dark because the light can't can't escape. Yeah, that's the occlusion shadow. That's my mid-tone or half-tone. And the terminator mm -hmm. is a kind of a sharp line. Yeah, so you don't have any reflected light yet, right? No, I was thinking of going in with my colored pencils. Um, like this little, like, here's my normal size pencil, and then here's my red <laughs> pencil. It's a baby pencil. Something, something clearly happened where I needed. <laughs> I need something very red. How's things on your end? Uh, well, I painted green on top of red. Uh, so this is what I got. That's a typical result, <laughs> as far as I recall. <laughs> what happens yeah. when you put those two colors together? Uh, so I've gotten some uh, Mars black to try to add shadow to this very dark thing, but I don't think it's going to show up on camera very well. So I'm going to need to lighten up some of this uh, area to be able to reveal any sort of form. Yeah. Alright. So. There's a little bit of yellow. It, over here is a little red on the stage. Mm-hmm. From, but it's also quite dark from as in the shadow. And then it's a little more over here. Uh, and then there's like actually a, a, a yellow bouncing off the marshmallow. I think that's coming from the flashlight. Yep. I think the flashlight is like yellow tinted. A little bit. There. There's my three colors. Or, uh, making stuff. stuff you need three, three values of three colors. No backsies. Wait, no what? Backsies. You can't take backs. Back. No taxi backsies or no backseating. No, just no no taxi backsies. Okay. Just like Evangelion, you can not go back. Tabaxi? That's not true. Corey played a tabaxi. Yeah. I mean, this is a no D's and D zone. We are forbidden from discussing any sort of role-playing games. Except, um, Ten Candles. We can talk about Ten Candles. Because fire is involved. Real fire. Maybe I should make a smudge stick. Where is a piece of paper? You should. Or you can just, uh, nope. use your finger. Uh-uh. Because... -uh. You're going to get that. dirty anyway. <laughs> I'm not falling for... What do you mean, anyway? 
I mean, art is messy. You just have to accept that. Messy. Paper cone. Uh, Contention Cat, I believe there are more gnomes later tonight. Yes. Well, the same amount of gnomes. A hundred of them. They are, they are there again. Several dragons. And not a lot going on in that room. Thick slices of bread. I don't know why whenever I come on the show, I make such ugly things. I can't do good art, I swear. <laughs> I think you've uncovered the, the secret of Kendra versus Clark. <laughs> See, it's not that I'm bad at art. It's that I'm on the show. I mean, most art is ugly before it's done. Yeah, yeah, that's what's happening. It's just not finished <laughs> yet. The moment it's finished, it'll be beautiful. If it isn't beautiful, then it's just not done yet. Yeah, that's how you know when to stop, because it's beautiful. Be like, oh no, it's too beautiful to touch. It's like the perfect macaron, and then you can't eat it. Right? Oh, yeah, I don't like them anyway, so what? I'd rather just look at them. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, they're just too sweet for me. I, have you been to a live painting demonstration of like a real artist? I've been to a shadow show where the artist used sand to block light on a light table. That's and neat. Drew in that during like a, a narration. And I've been to, like, a special church sermon where there was an artist seated during the sermon and painting something related. Okay. Don't, I don't remember if they finished. Uh, and I've definitely seen Bob Ross. Uh, but no, I have not. I have not really, not really seen much live art. Have you thought about doing a Bob Ross paint along on Cantrell Horses Club? Yep. Oh yeah. Because I've seen a lot of Bob Ross, but I have, uh, I've never painted along with him. Right. Because he he uses oil paints, and I'm terrified of oil paint. That's why I haven't done it. But I think you could do it with other paints. Yes. You just have to, like, match the colors he's talking about. And go faster, I think. Maybe if you watch Bob Ross at, like, twice speed, you can do acrylics. Because <laughs> they dry faster. 
but he does his stuff in about 20 minutes and works wet, so... I, I don't know if double speed is humanly possible. <laughs> I think I mean, we actually... Oh god, did we, for our Loading Ready Live, do a Bob Ross art challenge on like... Little poster board cutouts or something like that. I remember something like that. I remember like that. Graham dressing up as Bob Ross in one for a goof. That was a desert bus opening? Was it? Or was it, we had Kate dress up, but we've also had Graham. Where yes. the camera would desert just bus, cut away. We did, we did a painting Bob Ross. But this show has only existed for this year, so we have not right. yet. You've 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 been on most of the shows, so. <laughs> Wait, Ian? Wait, I didn't see what that said. Oh, he it says Can't Draw Horses time. Club established twenty twenty one. Oh. I think I'm almost done with this, whatever this is. Uh, I'm just adding my third value, just highlights on each one. Yeah, just... Trying to like connect them so they look like one piece of fabric. I feel like I am, as per usual, being too cowardly with my dark values. Do you have a Sharpie? Or a black pen? I have a purple pen. Is um, the top... Well, I don't... From my perspective, the top right of the marshmallow is nearly black. So I don't know where that is on your picture because it's upside down and backwards but the the shadow edge or the light edge the shadow edge yeah the shadow edge away from the surface that it's resting on that part Oh, and there's a fold in the fabric. Ooh, Beowulf. I know that's a joke, but ASCII art is actually pretty interesting. It is. It's a lot like cross-hatching. Yeah. Where it's like the density of your line like informs the shape. <laughs> ASCII CDHC when? Oh. Like I know there are like command line tools that'll convert PNGs or JPEGs to, to ASCII or even some live camera shaders that will. My very first programming assignment was to make 
a program that printed out ASCII art of my teacher. Really? Yeah. In GW Basic. What's the GW stand for? Oh, God. G Wiz. It stands for G Wiz, and that is not a joke. <laughs> Yeah, um, definitely started in more like visual basic. Yeah. And no, even, I'm old. Even it's visual, fun. visual basic. <laughs> like, I technically didn't start programming until college, but mm -hmm. before that, I was futzing around with JavaScript for MUDs, HTML for my Neopets. Uh, friends were making card games and computing in class, and I would try to help them debug their their basic. Uh, had some sumo fighting robots with like a C-like uh, in Ooh. command system. That's neat. Um, All right, I'm gonna set this aside so it can dry. What should I do now? What should you do? Well, do you want to put a more complicated shape in your shadow box to, to create? Do you want to up, uh, okay. up the drama? Well, I have a dragon. I have a chunk of amethyst rock. I have the a... The rock probably has, like, subsurface scattering. That would be... It does. It's also dirty. Let me see if I can clean it off. <laughs> I don't we got this dirty crystal. The dust. <laughs> Filthy. This one's pretty clean, but it's it's very regular and nearly entirely see through. So I don't know. I I put that in the box during testing, and it was pretty neat looking. You could shove it in the marshmallow, just like intersect them. Oh. <laughs> It's fully convex. You're not going to get Sculpey in weird cracks. It's true. All right. Well, I guess. Are you done observing done. the marshmallow? I'm done observing the marshmallow. All right. All right. Well, it's going to die a horrible death, I guess. All right. <laughs> I have a marshmallow and I have a thing. How, how are you proposing that I put these together? <laughs> I would put it at an angle, like cool offset. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. There we go. Now it stands up. <laughs> All right. I'm going to change the background, too. Oh, we are going so, all out. <laughs> uh, what kind of background should I put in? Uh, I can leave it black or I can put in a different color. If you want to use colored light, then a white sheet might be cool or something like that. If you have, like, a piece of paper or something. I have... I do have a piece of paper. I have gray fabric. See? It's cool. I have white paper. All right, we'll debate the white paper. Wear it like a hat, yep.
All right. And new light. Yeah. See if we can get some cool backlighting in here. Oh. Look at that glow. Yeah. All right. I'll close the box. Yeah. The now it's in prison. Bad marshmallows okay. go to marshmallow jail. <laughs> Um, now I have to draw this on something. So, yeah, dramatic backlight. It's still plastic wrapped. this on black all right just uh cut this a little smaller Oh. of chipboard like the back of a, a notepad oh oh that makes sense like under the been, under the uh, cover yeah yeah and it's been spray painted black so i'm going to do my sketch with this quilting pencil which has white lead so i can see it What do you do with all the art that you produce on this show? Put it in a pile <laughs> behind me or sometimes to the side of me. I should, I should post it to Twitter. Uh, and I've been thinking a lot about changing the, the, the official hashtag to actually just can't draw horses club because that makes a lot of sense. Whereas Can't Horse Club doesn't tell new people that it's about drawing. It's like some key information missing without yeah. that word. Yeah, I do have an Instagram. I could I could Instagram my stuff. My Twitter is primarily for me to retweet memes on, and I always feel a little weird promoting stuff. Because I don't know if the people who follow me follow me for Twitter reasons, or because they're Lur fans. Because I've, I've been on Twitter since 2008, so... Like, 
the large stuff started a couple years after that. So maybe maybe there's some have... old, old holdovers <laughs> from. I don't know why people follow me on Twitter. Probably for cosplay most of the time, I would think. There's a lot of... A lot of geometry here. Yeah. I'm like, I want to draw the bright edges, but they're brighter than the marks I could make. Right, so you have to leave them blank. You have to not draw them. You draw everything. You draw them by drawing the things that are not them. Yeah. I think the next major thing for me to tackle other than shading cylinders would be proportion probably so that's what i find that i consistently do wrong have you done a uh a grid drawing sorry say again a grid drawing where uh, you take like no i haven't a, on, on a grid and put it over a a photograph or another piece of art and then you draw each individual box it helps a lot we did that in my elementary school art class with a poster of macaulay culkin uh we it was cut up and like each square was given to a different student to draw and then it was reassembled into a hideous monster. <laughs> wow. You make it sound so much fun. <laughs> I mean, it would have gone better if the elementary school students were better at drawing. <laughs> but it was an important lesson in proportions. <sighs> yeah, all right. We can do that. Just recruit some people from chat to fill in the rest of the squares for us. What would you cut up? Because not a poster of Macaulay Culkin, right? Why not? That sounds, okay. that sounds like fun. You know what? I can't draw a straight line, so I will use a ruler. That's fair. Shows how terrible I am at drawing straight lines. Look at that. I can't even draw a straight line with a ruler. It's still crooked. <laughs> that's a problem. That's a problem <laughs> if, if, that's what, if that's where you're at. No, wait. Is it straight? Okay, straight isn't the right word. Parallel. Parallel to the edge is the word that I was missing. Okay, so I have uh, my sketch, and now I'm going to paint stuff. Good luck. I need 
Let's see. Blue. So the background looks kind of like a light blue. Yeah. Blue gray. Stepping up my pencil game. Let's see. Where can I move things so people can see them? Here we go. Lurgot's talking about crystals? Is uh, that... Uh, that's bad advice. Is that a coincidence? Yes. Or did someone tell it to? Well, the, it's the bad advice command. So it's there's a list of bad advice that it has. And it picked that one at random. I don't know that that's bad advice. Seems uh, fine to me. Your your bathing suit zone? Crystals for your bathing suit zone? You sure that's not bad advice? Chris, just... Uh, it's talking about uh, the, 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 the goop uh, stuff. <clears throat> oh! Then yes, I guess that's bad advice. Yeah. It's for cleansing energies of crystals in, in your downstairs. I just think crystals are pretty. I don't think they have any particular power. Okay. <laughs> okay, there's a little white thing on the right side, which is an artifact of the light sitting there, and I'm going to choose to pretend that doesn't exist, because it's ugly. The little little flare spot? Yeah, on the... the oh, is it? You're drawing it upside down, aren't you? Yeah, so it's the bottom <laughs> left. Or the top left. <laughs> it's on your bottom right. Yeah. It's just a piece of the foam on the light that's visible. Oh, I am still trying to faithfully recreate what I see, so it's staying.
hear Ian. Yep. He's lurking, you know. I could get you uh, some, uh, I don't know, keyboard ASMR if you want. <laughs> I can hear it. The clicky clacks? Doesn't bother me. But it's not like I seek it out. Right. So far, my picture kind of makes it look like the light is coming from the crystal, which I don't mind. I think you're experiencing why a lot of artists choose to start with gray paper or yeah. non-white paper. It's because filling in the, the space. Yeah, it's just time consuming. And it uses your materials, so yeah, there's technically an expense there. Good night, TXC2. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, have a good one. All right, you mentioned there was uh, some notifications. So let's thank Adam J. Ford for 81 months, Winsterton for 41 months, and Silver Ramble for 80, 18 months, who says, Yay, I catch one of my favorite streams live. Thank you, and welcome. There's a real temptation to make everything that's uh, transparent fully white, like. Right, because you're just doing grayscale, right? Yeah. And I know it's transparent, so therefore it would not have shadow, clearly. So my brain's like, no, don't draw there, it's clear. Yeah, that's something I got pretty good at, is ignoring my own brain. <laughs> Just pretend you're a robot and draw exactly what you see, with no interpretation whatsoever. Yeah. There's just so much variation. Like, if I tried to block out all the shapes I'm seeing, it would it would be messy. Yeah, you don't have to draw everything. You want to start with the biggest shapes that you see. I've heard if you squint, it makes everything blurry, and then you draw only the things that you can see when you squint. Yeah, that's a lot less. Yeah. And that makes it easier to see, like, the value groups. Yep. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, Lord Zorano, if you have glasses, you can just take them off. I should put mine on then. They're blurry because Here. they're covered in dust. <laughs> that, that also works. Just wear sunglasses. Just put my sunglasses on. Just take some sunglasses and run sandpaper over them and put those on. <laughs> Drop your expensive uh, prescription lenses on the cement uh, a little bit. Yeah. Grind them really into the ground. Ian handed me a glasses cleaning cloth. He's a helper. And now I will put these back on my dusty desk. <laughs> now that they're clean. <laughs> I would kind of try to like to color a little bit. Let's get my perps. Get some perps out. Like a hot pink spot. There is, right? At the top middle, which is the bottom middle for you, right? Yep. Most of it's like a uh, sky magenta, which I'm assuming is a sky blue for magentas, but I would call it more of a lilac. I know colors. I might be making something that's not ugly on Cantrell Horses Cloud. Uh, I heard Maybe. that was impossible. Well, it's not done yet, so. Ah, so it's definitely not beautiful yet. It's not beautiful yet, but it could still become ugly. It's an in-between state of metamorphosis. Speed of blue. Sky blue. And then switch to a smaller paintbrush. Start actually painting the crystal. This is a number one round brush. Mm. This kind of looks like a, a thing you would see on like a board game card. 
Like you, here's this item that you have. You found the artifact. <laughs> yeah. Da 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 da. Amethyst lodged in a marshmallow. Well, to be perfectly honest, this is a piece of colored glass. That that is not a uh, an amethyst. I have real amethyst, but it's not as clear. So garbage. Yeah, and also I couldn't get all the dust out of all the corners. <laughs> Got to go in there with some like canned air. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, that'll that. make the cats. Yeah, yeah no, maybe. <laughs> they do not enjoy the canned air. I haven't seen them in a while. I'm going to turn my picture upright so I can see what it looks like. Ew. I think the bottom left corner is not parallel with the t of the gem itself. Yeah, that 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 part. Okay. It's not parallel with the top, which means your gem is I don't know, got a crooked edge. I don't know. It's if you take the bottom corner and move it up. I think it'll straighten stuff out and look better. Move the bottom corner up. Move. There. I moved it. Yeah, <laughs> that'll do it. <laughs> Let's mess up a marker. What are you doing with the marker? Putting purple on the marshmallow. <laughs> Do you have any white material that can go on top of that? White. Chalk or paint? Or white out. Because, like, the very top of the marshmallow is not black. It's yes. got some white on it. Yeah. That's why I wanted to add purple. I tried with the pencil crayon, but it just made it darker, which is not. Oh, okay. Darker. So you can get that effect then by making the rest of the marshmallow black and leave the very top just the dark purple. All right, black pencil crayon. Your time to shine. <laughs> just wait till that suction is dry from the, the marker. Pendle Steven has found Sky Magenta for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, takes me back to the days of reading RGB codes. <laughs> I had to do that yesterday. Back My... in the day. <laughs> 
for my embroidery machine was trying to tell me what color of thread to use. Oh. That's handy. Yeah, I would just be doing slurps and uh, ramps. Uh, what's what's a slurp? A circular interpolation. It's like linear interpolation, but around <laughs> <laughs> more like a degree circle <laughs> like a hue circle I know what that is yeah but it's like you know you you, you hit zero again <laughs> Yeah, your uh, number goes up, but eventually you roll back around to zero. Uh, Contingent Cat, the the numbers for embroidery thread, like on the uh, on the spools, are not RGB. They're just code numbers for the different. Uh, Brands. Different shades, sha yeah, different shades for different brands. Um, but when you digitize, and you're you don't tell it a particular brand of thread that you're using, then the machine will tell you the RGB. Then you get to guess. Then you get to guess, yes. Or look up tables. <laughs> Sleep. Hey, does your yarn company have a website with all of the colors listed? And the answer is yes, they do. It is, yes, because people are like that. I don't know yeah. if you know this, but uh, people who make quilts are nerds. It's true. I wasn't even making a quilt. I was making a shirt. People who do embroidery are nerds. <laughs> You want to see someone geek out about a sewing machine or a serger? Oh, I don't even own a serger. I'm I'm a bad sewer. You are a bad sewer. How are you supposed <laughs> to? How are you supposed to do anything without a serger? <laughs> By hand? Huh. No more glue. tubes for you. And glue it together. <laughs> no. Let's throw some staples in there. Safety pins. Uh, Safety pins, hot glue, and prayers are what holds all of my cosplays together. But yeah, there's a reason that the origins of computing are found in fiber arts. <laughs> you have to make maps with instructions on how to get patterns. To create common language. And we are up to the next break. So Ooh. I am going to step away, get some more water, replace my melty ice pack. It's all floppy okay. now. <laughs> Okay. No further questions. My ice pack is sick. Anyways, commercial. All right, bye.
Welcome back to us and all of you here on Cat Draw Horses Club. I'm with Angel today. We are doing light and shadows. <laughs> Good save. <laughs> nice. Nice. Nailed it. Nailed it. Uh, Angel has provided us with a little shadow box to do uh, some studies with. Unlike me, who is just a field of cylinders. Wait, no. Where am I? Field of cylinders. <laughs> uh, happy paste some cylinders. Yeah. 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 So many cylinders. Change my light source to the, the sun. <laughs> there we go. So cylinders are too close to the sun. Or, the sun is too close. Did you ever think of that? No. Uh, no. No. Get big, big, big. I'm making a floor. Ah. Uh, I can just turn down the sun. That's handy. And make the sun... Sun, sun colored. So, I don't see any occlusion shadows on those cylinders. You sure? Well, on, on the bottom part, so like, they're not actually touching the ground. Left a little bit. Like, the shadows are one solid color all the way through. Where I would expect them to have some lighter areas towards the end of the shadow. Okay, then I can turn down the sun a little more. <laughs> Is that just the sun being too bright? Uh, and there's also no ambient light. I, I changed the global light to uh, basically black. Is that a little better? What if I render this? Cool. I think maybe it's just because there's nothing for the light to bounce off of behind the cylinders. Behind the cylinders. So like if I threw another plane or cube or something in there? Well, I guess it should be bouncing off the cylinders and onto each other, and it's not doing that. Like, the shadow is, but the light isn't. Some of these don't have materials on them. So that might be part of it. Mm. This one can be blue. Well, we get a different blue. This one. Yellow. Perfect. It's beautiful yellow. This one is white. This can be pink. Okay, let's move the camera back a bit. Side a bit. Maybe I should change the direction my son is pointing. Meow. Meow.
What happens if you move the green or the yellow cylinder close to the gray cylinder? Yeah, it's in the shadow. So, yeah, but I would expect some of the yellow to reflect onto the gray cylinder. I would too. So I don't know what I need to change in either my preview or focus. Green space refraction. Green space reflections. There it is. Now it's bouncing yellow onto the, the cylinder. It's hard to see from the side. Okay, yeah, I see it. Yeah. Now it's all beautiful. Just hit the render button. <laughs> the gray one is inside of the yeah, purple. I just moved view. it over there. All right. Wait, is the purple cube translucent? No, it's just uh, I have full control of the vertical and horizontal, so I can put things inside of other things. <laughs> I can too. I put a, a gem inside of a marshmallow. You did. <laughs> I could, uh, I could take a bite out of one of these cylinders. I will not take a bite out of this marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> it is not, in fact, a marshmallow. Uh, camera to view. Is that? That's not what I wanted. Camera. Camera. trying to point my camera so that it will render everything. All right. So now I can uh, 
really? It doesn't see the other window? That's silly. So Blender popped out another window. There it is. There's my render. Beautiful. So now if you take that screenshot and put it into Photoshop, you can blur the edges of those cylinders and make them look like actual cylinders and not just many polygon side sided things. I think I could just uh, change the settings in the object. <laughs> ah, da -da -da -da. <laughs> Atom. You thingy. You just increase the number of sides until we can't tell anymore? Oh, no. <laughs> What's happened to it? Nothing. I subdivided <laughs> it a little too much. Oh, random trivia. That, uh... I've done stuff like that before. When you don't have a scanner, you just take a picture of a picture. I know what the modifier is. Smooth. That's what the modifier is. Makes sense. Smooth. Wait. That's not. No. No, no, no. Oh, come on. Eh, eh, no. Eh, eh, no. Oh no. Oh, a different smooth. Smooth <laughs> corrective? I feel like smudging it in Photoshop would have been faster than this. No. <laughs> Doubt it. Perfect and beautiful. I can I can draw them now. So when you were trying to make the cylinder last time I was on, you said you wanted the light directly in front. So what That's does that true. look like in Blender? Uh, so I've got my sun, uh, but I could make that point light. Bring it down here. There we go. 
Now it's kind of directly in front from the side of the camera. That's what that looks like. Okay, so just mm, the same color in the middle, slightly shaded on either side. Yes, that is what I'm seeing. The highlight is the closest to the normal. Closest surface, closest normal. I wonder if I can look at the normals. In Blender, show normals. What am I looking at? I haven't, uh, Switch to edit mode. Oh. Select object, switch to edit mode. Uh, so I've got that one cylinder. In edit mode. The overlays button. This is for a version of Blender that is old and obsolete. I have to find a, a new answer. Can you recreate this gym picture in Blender? Yes. <laughs> How long would that take? Nobody knows. I'd be interested to see if it leaves anything out. Or if it shows something different. Maybe that will be post stream. <laughs> I'm sure there's probably a just a gem like model you can get. You just download it. You don't think you would have to create that yourself, right? It's a classic emerald square cut gem.
toggle my mesh display. Somewhere. Somewhere is the thing I want. That should have been the lyrics okay. to Over the Rainbow. Ah, I found it. Uh, okay, where is it? I'm in edit mode. Mesh display. This is different. You have a different version than what they're using? Yeah, I think so. This is the 2.79 manual that I'm reading, which is probably why it's not working, because this is 2.9. Finding the thing. Normal. Normala. If I could spell properly, it would work. I just want to look at them. Okay, go back to your thing, which is coming along nicely, I would say. Thank you. There's still spots I haven't filled in yet. But I've never painted on black before. This is kind of fun. It's definitely a different experience because I usually water down my paints to get lighter colors and that does not work when I'm painting on black unless I first paint it white <laughs> which defeats the purpose there was a stray child that shut the door being too loud <laughs> I guess too rambunctious <laughs> Paint's starting to get dry. Looks like they replaced uh, just showing normals as like a little a line. Uh, they have gone to this mode where normals that face the light source are, or the camera are blue and normals that face away are red. Which is very, very easy to see. 
I'm failing to see red in this picture. You don't see like the the red bounce club? No. There's like a red outline on the faces of one of the cylinders. Is that what it is? No. Hello, Wintermelon 100. Thank you for closing the door. The cat did not close the door. All right, I give up again, yet again. <laughs> Computers are hard. And a mistake. I'm just gonna close Blender so I'm I'm not tempted. <laughs> there. I right, am free from its clutches. Can I uh, can I see your drawing bigger? Sorry, it's upside down. No, 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 it's not. No, don't. <laughs> Yes, all right. Now I can't look at it. <laughs> I fixed it. I put it back up. Okay, okay. Okay, so I think the there's a little bit of shadow you could add uh, here. In the, the body of the crystal? Yes, like this shadow on this part here this here okay can i you can't see my mouse if i no put it on this but i can see where you're pointing so. on with nope that doesn't work <laughs> i can I, I think i can see okay there's just like this a, a shadow missing or like some values you could make slightly darker in that one area that will give you more depth. And that took me so long to explain my paint on my brush dries. <laughs> No. Now I'm gonna mix my color again.
Yes, Pendle Steven, we are playing art, the hot new video game. Yeah, I'm, I'm basically like James only playing Minecraft, except it's it's I only play art. I get that message sometimes when I raid other channels from mine. It was like, I am at this was last seen playing art. Well, thanks. Thanks, yeah. Twitch. Making me real feel real good about my work. Did you add the shadow? Did it do what I said? A little bit. Yeah. Maybe if I just do more smudging. Smudging is a powerful and dangerous tool. if this is the kind of art that Adam would say is art. I... If he <laughs> looked at it, I could see him being confused. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? You trying to draw something here? But, I don't know. I've always liked art, so I don't, I don't really sympathize with his issue. I think especially because of how much I like absurdism or like Dadaist crap that is like you, have to, you put a urinal sideways and I'm like yeah I get it look at that thing that's no longer functional as as was intended or designed gotcha so like the the duct tape banana incident you're into that sort of thing yeah I love the duct tape banana other than like the ripping off of that one. <laughs> like, you appreciate the art, but not the, the money? A little bit, yeah. Like, I understand that there's, like, a consumerist side. Like, people gotta eat. 
It's nice to have a wealthy patron. It's nice to have people into your crap. Yeah. It's also nice if you have, like, the reputation where you can just, you know, turn on a paper shredder once, once your piece is sold. Well, yeah, the banana is not going to last very long. <laughs> no. Heard of the peanut butter floor. Yes, I've seen the peanut butter floor. I would love what? to go see the peanut butter floor in real life. What is this? I don't it's know. It's just a big, is. like, pool of peanut butter. Does it get refreshed? I think or so. Or is it going to be rancid? Yeah, I think it uh, is a kind of a limited dis display gallery type thing. Crunchy or smooth? I think it's smooth. Let me look, let me look this up. Not further floor. Ah, its actual name is Peanut Butter Platform. The platform that you're not supposed to walk on? Yep. Try to see if there's a... Oh no, my camera is running out of battery. Oh no, 20%. <laughs> At least three visitors accidentally walked onto the floor and were held responsible for the damage. Oh. It was first executed in 1969. Yeah, it doesn't say how long how long the display lasts. Oh, this is a repeated thing? They put the peanut butter platform up and then take it down and then put it up again? Well, like, if you're in a gallery space, it's it's more the execution of uh, a thing, right? Yeah. Just gonna... Open it to address. There we go. Just gonna throw up an image. Or, no, browser source. Gotta remember to do that for internet things. Browser! Whoop. That is the peanut butter platform. It's beautiful. What is it trying to say? Also, this lighting on this peanut butter platform is incredibly boring. Low drama. Uh, like a lot of absurd things, I think it's uh, taking something outside of the context that you would normally see it. Like, it is about finding something unexpected. So, in this case, you're walking through an art gallery, and then you come into a room, and there's a lake of peanut butter that's, like, got perfectly sharp edges and is perfectly flat on top. I imagine a large part of the experience of that display is the smell. I That's why I want to go see it. Yeah. Because, like, galleries have, it like, a very particular smell. Like, all the kind of open concrete and... Like, it's not quite, like, hospital smell, and it's not, like, parking garage smell, but it is... <laughs> Somewhere in between hospital and parking garage yeah. is the smell of an art gallery. <laughs> yes. Well, like, um, oil paintings have a particular smell. Mm-hmm. And because uh, a lot of galleries are really air and temperature controlled 
you get a mm -hmm. lot of like that recycled air kind of feeling like in an airplane yeah like in an airplane or maybe even an airport but I imagine like coming across peanut butter and look but don't touch peanut butter some some art pieces that involve like uh surfaces and stuff actually encourage you to walk on them because like the sound or texture of the flooring is part of the experience mm -hmm. but not so peanut butter I wonder if, like, along with that exhibit, they sell more peanut butter at their cafe than usual. Like, they offer peanut butter sandwiches because people will have smelled the peanut butter and then want to eat it. Is it a marketing gimmick? No, no, it's just an absurdist piece. But it can be dual purpose. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But it's like, here's a liquid material that's solid. Here's a, a food that you're not supposed to eat. Here's a floor you're not supposed to walk on, or a platform you're not supposed to walk on. Here's something just very silly in a space that's meant to be very serious. Mm hmm. Here's like. Because of course, of course, people are like, that ain't art. Like, well, of right. course. But the entire point is that everything in life is a little silly. And that's fine. That's actually a good thing. It's good to have silly things. It's, it's having fun can be the entire point. Which is, you know, very different from, like, uh, Monet and the Impressionist movement. We were very, you know, interested in catching uh, light. Right. Actually, I, I learned recently that uh, Monet started losing his vision during his career. Oh. So some of his later stuff, it looks blurry and unfocused because that's what his eye was telling him. Just not like just squinting. not just the fog in London. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't look at the which years that they were painted. I think it's in the presentation though. Hey, uh, what are they? The Parliament? Parliament. Parliament. Yeah, he did another. I mean, he did that with a bunch of different things, right? I think Haystacks is another pretty famous one. So, 1899 and 1900 and 1901. Oh, some of them are 1902. It looks like a yearly thing, like he would just go to London. From what I said, it, it was outside of his window. He didn't have to go anywhere. St. Thomas Hospital. And then he would go home to France. Ah.
And apparently, uh, he came to take, like, photos or things and take them back to France to finish the pictures. So people are like, these aren't accurate. <laughs> Monet, you made this up. You're not a real artist. You didn't sit there the entire time and paint. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he was in his 60s when he was painting these. Okay. Yeah, I could see his eyesight, his eyesight being a little uh, blurry by then. There's also like Picasso did some really interesting stuff. Like he, I don't know if you've seen any of his stuff before he started doing abstract. Picasso, he has a really yeah. good portraiture. Yeah, like he, it was like a camera. He could draw exactly what he saw, but then that was boring, right? Yeah. It was more interesting to like restrict himself to color palettes or to like with the whole cubist movement try to draw the same subject from multiple perspectives yeah at the same time yeah yeah my uh secondary school for like uh grade eight had uh guernica on one of the, the walls as a big mural nice I was also looking at a bunch of um, Paul Klee stuff, which often includes like stick men. Yeah, you had that uh, when you were when you had met on doing movement, right? Yep. You showed some of that. I'd never seen it before. I love it so much. <laughs> it's very colorful. I yeah. Would like that. But I actually, I, I grabbed his, his notebooks, which have like annotations in them. So you can see him kind of working through the ideas of uh, color values or mm -hmm. lighting values, as well as uh, creating tension with different length lines or different thicknesses and uh, sort of a cubist, like trying to show the interior and exterior of a thing at the same time. So a lot of his stuff is biology based. So he'll be like trying to show how a leaf works. Okay. While also showing the leaf itself. What it looks like. Yeah. Or like growing plants and branching things. But he also got really into hieroglyphs. Which is sort of where the stickmen come from. Okay. But also, like, you know what? If you're gonna uh, simplify the human form, it's a stickman. It's all you need. It's is, a little smiley face on the stick. Is the stickman universal, like, across cultures? I've seen some cane paintings that have, like, very simplified, like, the seven-up man kind of <laughs> the, the, the spot no not the spot the the other guy I just... sorry what Fido Dido Fido Dido yeah, what's his name let me google this <laughs> Ian says his name is Fido Dido I only know the spot it is Fido Dido okay uh let me just to... pull up a thing if people haven't played the Sega Genesis classic 7-Up Spot game. I highly recommend it. <laughs> it's it's an absurd platformer. 
Is it identical to the one that was on the Super Nintendo? Because I played Probably. a lot of that. I, I didn't have a Super Nintendo, so I don't know. But I would assume so. Okay, this is Fido Dido. It kind of looks like a character from Doug. It does look like a character from Doug. So, kind of simple, but not a sick man. Right. But he has that thing where, like, the entire head shape isn't drawn. So the yeah, like, hair just, just comes out of space. Yeah. And that's from 7-Up? Yep, it's one of the mascots. I don't think I've ever seen that. Well... Looks like you don't know your brands. I don't. I don't drink soda, so I don't pay attention to it. Yeah, so I guess uh, homework for Horse Club this week is watch the fall. <laughs> and <laughs> do some studies on <onto> that. <laughs> as well as uh, look up old branding. Do we have homework? Oh no. Corporations. Well, it is the end of the stream. It is. Can I call this gem done? Is it done? It call looks look. good. We have the dark could you, shadows. Could you, could you flip it the right way up for me? Ah. <laughs> There you go. Thank you. <laughs> uh, let's see. Coming up on the channel, Loading Ready Run, we've got... Let's go back to Monday, which is today. Uh, Dice Friends, Numbs 100, Dragon Zero with Adam, Beach, and Paul. Then tomorrow, there is a bonus stream in the early AM with Graham, uh, doing a co-stream on some sort of magic showcase, uh, followed by 9 o'clock, and then Talking Sim, Cameron and I are starting Manifold Garden, and the Let's Note Boys will be continuing Resident Evil Village. I think that's everything that I should announce the, uh, Schedule is all up on loadingreadyrun.com slash live. Thank you for your patronage and your subs and bits. And um, thank you, Angel, for being here today. I stream every Thursday at 7.30 Pacific. I paint portraits of pets, not gems here. Do you have your, your dog nearby? I have a dog and a cat. So I have a cat. I don't know if that's right side up or upside down. Mm. Here, let, me let me go back to your your actual shot. There, there. We go. yeah. We have a kitty, and we have a dog. Yes. We're starting a new painting this week of another cat, uh, Christine Sprinkles' cat, lovely white boy. And uh, all also Thursday this Thursday at five. Uh, I and myself and others will be on Use for Games channel with Jake Burgess, by Pacific, that is. I believe Sarah's going to be there, but we don't know what we're playing yet, so. Tune <laughs> <laughs> in for chaos. <laughs> Maybe it's um, a Spirit Squad plays Bloodborne. <laughs> I think he's done with Bloodborne, I hope. He's done, but you guys that. haven't all, as a group, remotely controlled the game, so... Every person has a different button. It's gonna, it's gonna take some teamwork, but I believe in you all. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> hey, 
Anyways. Thank you. You're welcome. See you again in the future. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.